There are a million reasons why Super Mario Odyssey is a fantastic video game, but my favorite little detail has to be the snapshot mode. By pressing down on the D-pad, you're able to pause the action, move the camera anywhere you want, and get a better look at almost anything in the game. Now I say almost because there's one crucial moment where the snapshot button mysteriously stops working, and that's any time Mario uses Cappy's capture ability. If you don't believe me, try it out for yourself. You can jam on the D-pad as much as you want, but from the moment Mario's hat lands on an enemy until the moment he's absorbed into that enemy's body, you completely lose the ability to control the camera. For some reason, Nintendo has designated this specific moment in Mario Odyssey as one thing that players should not be able to take too close of a look at. Luckily, thanks to modern video capture technology, we can still go frame by frame through this moment and really analyze what's going on here. First, let's break down how the capture ability works. Mario throws his hat, and if it finds a living target, the hat sticks and Mario instantly dematerializes. And that's the first thing I think is worth looking at frame by frame here, the dematerialization of Mario. The moment Cappy makes contact with a creature of some kind, Mario's body gets instantly destroyed, cubed into dozens of pieces. In essence, Super Mario dies. It all happens in the blink of an eye, but if you slow it down, we can see that the exact moment that this happens, Mario's animation, whatever animation he's in, stops. It doesn't matter if he was in the middle of a laugh or a smile or blinking, all his bodily functions instantaneously stop, presumably because the nerves connecting his brain to his body have all been severed simultaneously. It appears that the moment Mario's body gets cubed, he dies instantly and perhaps mercifully. Now, for comparison's sake, let's compare what Mario goes through in this game to this moment's closest pop cultural counterpart, which in this case is this Sprite commercial from 2010 in which the rapper Drake drinks a bottle of Sprite and then his head sort of expands or explodes into pieces. Now what's interesting here is that in comparison to Mario, Drake appears to remain alive and even conscious for the entire duration of the event, which some might argue is actually more terrifying than what Mario experiences in Super Mario Odyssey. But back to Mario, this game is about Mario using his hat to inhabit the bodies of other beings, and so therefore the dematerialization he suffers only happens because his physical body needs to go somewhere when his consciousness enters another form. It has to be destroyed because the alternative is just as horrifying. Imagine a Mario game where, upon his soul exiting his body, his previous physical form just collapses lifeless onto the ground, uh, and, and imagine that happening every time you used Cappy's ability. It's not sustainable. It wouldn't be very Nintendo-like at all. The final part of the capture ability is when Mario chooses to leave a body he's inhabited, and it's, it's a pretty unceremonious affair at first glance. He just sort of hops out, fists in the air, doing the classic Mario Jumpman pose. But the, the important question here is where does that Mario, where does that body come from because it, it certainly can't be the same body we just watched evaporate seconds ago. This, this has to be, by any meaningful measure, a new Mario. To explain what I mean by that, we should talk a little bit about the teletransportation paradox. Now, this is a, a theory that essentially posits that any form of true teleportation must effectively be just destroying the life form that enters the teleporter and rebuilding an atomically identical version in another location. So, so even though this Mario is perhaps molecularly identical to the original and may even have all the same memories as the original Mario, it's, it's very likely that the original Mario, the one we saw die when it was cut into pieces is an entirely separate Mario consciousness that was terminated the moment Mario threw his hat. But it's not just Mario's consciousness that Mario Odyssey calls in question, let's talk about what the capture ability does. Be beyond the cap pun, the word capture denotes a few things in the English language. Captivity, subjugation, imprisonment, and in, and in this game Mario captures everything, not just enemies innocent bystanders, animals, even even friends of Mario's. And, and while we don't know what happens to the consciousness of these creatures when he captures them, there are some major clues, and I think for the biggest one we should go back to the beginning of Mario Odyssey, the first time Mario ever captures a creature. At the very beginning of Super Mario Odyssey, the first creature you capture is a frog, which triggers this short accompanying cutscene. Now the reason I point this out is because in this cutscene, in the brief period of time after Cappy gets thrown out of the frog's head, before Mario gets sucked into the frog, uh, if you look in the background, the frog just sort of is hanging there in this, this state of suspended animation, unable to move or really do anything. It's still, it is still moving slightly, ostensibly because its body still needs to breathe, it still needs oxygen to function, but its consciousness is clearly absent, or at least the connection between the consciousness and the soul. And so, by looking at it, you can just tell there is no life in its eyes, there is no life in its body, and instead it's become this sort of empty vessel waiting for Mario to inhabit it. 
So looking just at this frog as an example, I, I think the immediate question is where does the frog's brain go? Or more accurately, where does the frog's soul go? And, and therefore, what about Lakitu's soul or, or Yoshi's soul? There are two possible answers to this question. One, either the soul is banished somewhere that we can't understand, some sort of limbo holding them between life and death, or the creature is there, it is trapped in its own body, it's aware, but it's completely unable to move, and it's stuck in a sort of first-person sleep paralysis while being controlled by Mario. And, and it goes without saying that neither of these options are great for the creature being captured. Now this brings me to my actual conclusion, which is that Super Mario Odyssey is a game about pain. Even in the first half hour, the game sets this tone very clearly. The primary emotions we see Mario go through are fear, confusion, agony. Many, many of Mario's abilities appear to be straight up painful for him to use. And, and even the thousandth time you use the capture ability, look at Mario's face. He is clearly not enjoying the physical process of capturing another being. He's not happy. He is scared. He is alarmed. He's he's confused. And he's it's, it's just visibly unpleasant to him. Super Mario Odyssey is a game with a lot to say about consciousness, about the idea of the self. It says a lot about what it means to be a person or to even be at all. But if you take away one thing from the game, let it be this. Mario's life is horrible and he hates being alive. Thanks for watching.